I'm Annie. And I'm Leah. And this is Lactation Business Coaching with Annie and Leah, where we talk about the smart way to create a compassionate and professional private practice. Let's dive in. Leah, it's been so long. We took the whole summer off. Welcome back. I'm so excited to be back. But wow, this summer was a whirlwind and went by so, so fast. Um, So it was great to have a little break from recording and I'm ready to jump back in. How about you? How was your summer? It, you know, as summers go, like not enough of the good stuff, too much of like, how did this happen? Why didn't I spend more time at the beach? I always say that at the end of every summer, but I am really happy to be back because I feel like these talks that we have when we're podcasting are such a nice anchor for me, you know, just business wise and thinking about things with my private practice. So, you know, over the summer, I did feel like, and it's, it's good to have that time off that little break where you're not thinking about everything all the time, but I'm ready now. I'm ready to get back into the swing of things and I'm ready to get productive. Yes. That's our topic today. We're actually going to talk about why we need to be thinking about productivity as small business owners and lactation consultants and some different productivity tips and techniques that we can use. Um, I've been researching some because I've been feeling like I got to get back in the swing of things. The kids are back in school. I've got to get myself more productive, not in leisurely summer mode anymore. So I've been researching and I can't wait to share some of the the techniques that I've learned. And I hope, I know you have some good ones too. I love this topic and I'm super excited to talk about it. And before we dive into our content, um, we have a sponsor for this week's episode. Leah, can you tell us about our awesome, amazing sponsor? Yes. So Alyssa Schnell and her colleague have created a course for her breastfeeding and without birthing. Uh, If you haven't read that book, it is amazing. If you're supporting families that are relactating or inducing lactation, it's an amazing book. And now they have created this awesome course. So excited about it. Have you um, had some experience with that book, Annie? I love that book. I mean, it's the go-to for all things about induced lactation, adoptive lactation, anything outside of what is, you know, that traditional, typical biological process. It's covered in that book. And she's so good at explaining things really clearly and not making them, you know, over-medicalized. So you could really take what she's teaching you and uh, communicate that well to your clients. And so her course is going to launch October 1st, 2019. And they're having special intro pricing through October 8th. So if you sign up, I think the signups are going to open on October 1st. And if you register before October 8th, you're going to get the special pricing. And if you want to sign up, you're going to visit sweetpeabreastfeeding.com slash pro pack. And we're going to have that link in the show notes so you can click to sign up. It's going to be live around October 1st. And I'm sure if you go there now, you can sign up for her mailing list. I definitely recommend doing this. And we're just really thankful that she wanted to sponsor the episode so we could have this opportunity to get the word out about this great educational offering. So um, we're going to be talking about, as we said, productivity today. And Leah, I understand your marketing tip has to do with productivity. So what do you have for us? Yeah. So one of the productivity techniques that we're going to talk about today is called time blocking. I'm going to get a little bit more into that as we get started. But I have found that time blocking my content creation has been really, really valuable. So having a set time, whether that might be monthly or weekly, kind of whatever works for you, is to chunk it down. Like this is the time. 30 minutes. I'm only going to spend working on this content creation um, is a really, really helpful way to not make it overwhelming. If you're trying to squeeze it in randomly here and there, it can get so overwhelming when you're thinking about content creation. So I like to just chunk it down into this little block of time. I know this is what I'm going to do for this next 30 minutes or an hour. 
and I have it on my calendar. And I think that's a great way to uh, make sure that you're creating new content and that time set aside for that, you know? So let's talk about some of the, the time blocking. Have you ever heard of time blocking before, Annie? I have, and I've used it. Um, and it's, you know, what you're saying about using it for social media. I do think it's really great for tasks like that, because for me, time blocking is really about getting my mind in one place and keeping it there. Yes. Which I think is like one of the hardest things for us as, you know, small business owners, you're thinking I have all these tasks with business. And then you're also trying to support the families you're working with. So you have all these tasks related to supporting families and, and it just gets so jumbled up. And if you have a family or, you know, just other responsibilities in your life, then those get thrown in the mix. And before you know it, you just have like this whirlwind of to do's on your mind and things can slip through the cracks. And I found like setting times aside, knowing that like Monday at 9am, I'm going to be doing this. And, you know, Fridays at 2pm, I'm going to be wrapping up my week and, you know, having certain tasks and having it set out, um, can really, really pay off, especially if you're the type of person, I mean, I'm totally undiagnosed, but (laughs) unofficially diagnosed, but I self-diagnosed as ADD. I just feel like my brain just bobs around. So it, like you were saying, it really gives me a chance to like, know. okay, I'm only going to focus on this, only going to do this one task and and not going to let any other interruptions come in. If something else pops up, I'm just going to write it down on a piece of paper and keep moving forward. I think this helps too, if you're, um, finding yourself like really backed up with charting and reports, you know, if you have a set time of the week that like you wrap that all up, I think definitely before going into the weekend, like Thursday or Friday have like a wrap up, like, I'm just going to check all my charts, make sure I've, you know, crossed every T dotted every I sent my reports out, you know, those kind of things, like having a set time that, you know, for sure you're going to wrap up. I think helps you go into like maybe a more relaxing weekend. Yeah. I mean, I think there are some tasks where you might be thinking, Oh, it'll just, I'll just do it as I go. And what can happen with that is if you don't get to it, because you ran out of time for like, so like sending a pediatrician report, for example, you're like, okay, I'm totally going to do it. I'm going to get all my charting done during the console. And I'm going to hit send on that pediatrician report before I even leave their house or before they, you know, in the five minutes between consults at my office. And then something, it doesn't happen. Right. And then if you, without something like time blocking set up, you don't really have a place in your schedule to get back to that. And then it's hanging over your head. And that is really how you end up with a backlog of things that you didn't do. And so instead, if you say every Friday at 420, from 420 to 455, for example, I'm (laughs) going to, let's get really specific. I know, really specific. (laughs) Um, I'm, that is when I'm going to send all of my pediatrician reports. And what's great about doing that is the time is there. And guess what? If you were really on top of things and did send those pediatrician reports before you left the free house time. or during the office, you get to end early. So I know, it's like, like free time. A you give to yourself. <laughs> That's awesome. I think that's a great way to look at it. And it also just makes sure that you're setting time aside to um, kind of clean up behind yourself, you know, because they're always going to be, I mean, the random consult that you don't get out in time and you're struggling to even write one thing down on the chart. There's always going to be those one-off things. And so you have this kind of set time that you don't have to go like, when am I going to fit that in? Oh my gosh, the kids have this tonight and I have to go to this thing on that day, you know, like where you're like, I'll never be able to fit this in. We just know, okay, it'll get done. I know it'll get done. So I love time blocking. I've, this is something new to me. I have never used it before until this summer. Um, a mentor of mine was like, Hey, have you ever tried this technique? Cause I was really just, you know, with summer, everybody's going 20 different directions. I could not keep my head straight. (laughs) And so I was like, I've got to find a new technique. So I've really been trying to implement this more and more. And I'm really, really liking it. I think it's a great technique. I really think that, um, I, I, I loved using time blocking and it has really 
um, changed my life. I've been, I've been doing it for a while now. And what happens with me is that when I think of something, I just really want to do it right that second and get it done. I'm, I'm like very much like, I want my inbox to be zero. I want to have <laughs> nothing undone. And that really can be really crippling in terms of your productivity because everything becomes urgent. And when I've got some, an idea, I'm like, oh, I better get it done. Otherwise, when am I going to do it? And when I have time blocking, then it's going to get done. And like examples of things that end up taking up way too much mental space when I don't have a time block for them are things like planning my route between my clients and seeing if I, when I'm going to eat lunch. So say I have three consults. I like, I really like to map out where I'm going. How long is it going to take me between consults? I sit down with Google maps, I plot them all in and then I'll say, okay, I actually want to eat lunch. Maybe I want to move this client. I have, I have, I'm, I can move them 30 minutes later and then I can eat lunch and I like to find where I'm going to eat lunch. Oh, fun. But if I don't, and so I've started doing that like Sunday nights um, or first thing Monday morning, kind of depending on when my week is starting of consults. If I'm seeing doing consults on Mondays or uh, Tuesdays and that has really helped to just say, don't think about it all the time. Cause otherwise I'm just like all the time. I'm like, okay, wait a second. Where am I going again? How am I getting there? What's my path? What's my route? Where am I eating lunch? But if I say, okay, you're going to, you, Annie, have a date with yourself to, to plan this, right? And then I give myself permission not to think about it until right. that time when I'm going to think about it. And yeah. it really helped calm my brain down and get me out of this loop I get in where I'm just running through logistics and boring, boring stuff. Like none of it is any fun. Yeah, it's tedious. <laughs> yeah, it's so tedious. It's so tedious. Yeah, I think that's a great way to use time blocking. And it really helps you like clear your mind so that you can stay productive productive on the thing that you are working on and you don't have to go, oh, wait, it's bopping back and forth in your mind. You know, you're trying to focus on something else and then you're like, oh, but I got to do that. But I got to do that. You know, you just trust yourself that like later there's a time for that, you know? So I really like this. I hope to continue to cultivate this more in my um, day to day. And I'd love, you know, to hear from other listeners who are doing this type of productivity technique, because I think it's really great to hear how other people are using it. So you guys definitely let us know how you're using this. I think it's a great, a great technique. And I, when I learned about this, it kind of coupled with another technique that, um, but I've also been using, and I've actually been using with my kids some because it's really worked well for, for homework. Gosh, we already have homework. It's only like a little bit into school and we're already like bogged down with homework. So it's called the Pomodoro technique. Um, it's not a tomato or I think Pomodoro is like a tomato sauce or something, but which I thought was really funny, but, um, it is, is using like short blocks of time to focus your attention. So you set a timer and you work for 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break and then you work for 25 minutes, take a five minute break. And after four rounds, then you take the longer, like maybe 15 minute break. And they encourage you like in that five minute break to get up and stretch and kind of relax your mind for a second um, in whatever way that works for you. And then come right back at it. And um, I have found this super helpful with then tied into the time blocking. So it's like, okay, I have this time blocked. And then I set my timer for the 25 minutes. And if my time block is longer, you know, say my time block is an hour, yeah, I can do two of the Pomodoros in that time. It's really helped me kind of manage my attention during that time. Because I know, okay, I'm going to work for 25 minutes and then I can take a break and, you know, look at something if I need to look at something. Like it's not like I'm going to ignore it for the rest of the day. Um, but anyway, it, that's really helped me and then kind of coupled with it, especially for tedious tasks. Like I just, I, my brain doesn't like tedious tasks. <laughs> Have you ever used something like that, Annie, where you've kind of set a timer and said, okay, I'm going to work on this for a certain amount of time. I think it sounds a lot like what you do when you're kind of doing, if anybody's ever done a couch to 5k and yeah. where you're like, okay, 
I'm going to start by walking for one minute and running for four seconds or whatever it is. And then you yeah. like gradually build up to where you're running longer and longer. So like for things like those tedious tasks, if you're really like, just really don't want to do this, I can see like the Pomodoro technique working as like, you are going to make yourself work on it for 25 minutes. And then at the end, you get a five minute break. And then, so that can help be helpful for making you motivated. Cause that break is like, that's my break. I get a break. I don't have to do this till it's done. I just have to do it till I have a break. And then you can right. focus. I also see it being good for people who have the opposite problem, which is me, which is <laughs> <Yes>. where I... <laughs> can't stop working. And so when I'm doing something like when I'm writing, like when I'm I'm working on a book or um, building someone's website. And so like a super creative task that I get really immersed in and I'm enjoying myself. And I actually, when I'm doing that, I could go for a really long time without actually getting up out of my seat. Like where wow. I'm like, I, I mean, I, I'll sit there and be like, I've had to pee for like 15 minutes, but I'm like so immersed in what I'm doing. I don't want to take a break because oh, wow. I get so, so focused and so in that creative task. Um, and so I can see this as I, I definitely feel like that's not healthy. And there is a certain point where my, you know, creativity gets impacted. Like the longer I go doesn't necessarily mean longer, like better output. So it's kind of like right. pumping. It's like when, you know, I tell, I tell, um, my families who need to pump for supply that it's better to do more frequent crappy pumps is what I call them <laughs> yeah. than to try to wait until you have time to do like a really long one. Like, right. and so, I, you know, I think having this kind of, it's like a, this strategy feels like a way to protect yourself from your own like worst tendencies. Yeah. If that it makes could sense. go like definitely both ways for sure. And I love that. I mean, I'm so jealous that you have such immense focus. That's so awesome. But I could see where your brain just gets worn out after a while. So taking those five minute breaks kind of gives you a refresher. You could have a snack and drink of water. I tell moms that all the time. I'm like, pump for 10 minutes, get a snack and a drink of water and then pump for another 10 minutes and you're out put maybe substantially different than if you just pump straight for 20 minutes, you know, um, totally. sometimes things like that can make a big difference. So, and I, I also think, that's think I also think it's, it's a helpful way to train you on time in general. So like, mm -hmm. as you practice doing these 25 minute bursts, you're going to get really good. Your body's going to get really good at knowing when it's been about 20, 25 minutes. And that's helpful for organizing your time during a consult, especially yes. when you're in, when, when you get in those consults where things get super intense, you know, so they're like, it, it applies to, to that workflow as well, where you have the, you know, the consults that go pretty, um, straightforward, but then you have the ones that go, that go in a different direction. So I find for me, those are the ones where the client has, is sharing with me a lot of feelings about yes. their birth or what's going on. And we're talking, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of that empathetic listening and motivational interviewing and where we're, we're not really doing the clinical stuff, like in the baby's like asleep and we're, you know, whatever it is, or that I, that again, I go into that super focused place where I'm not really mindful of what time it is. And that's not good for us during consults either. Like we, we do need to be the one steering the ship when it comes to our time management in our consult. So by practicing that at home, and I do see this Pomodoro technique as being really good way to train you in better time management techniques yeah, and being general. able, yeah. I definitely think so. Yeah, that's a great way to th to tie it into the the work that we do. I think that's really really helpful um, way to look at it as well. So, what other techniques have you used, Annie? I know you've told me a couple of other ways that you've been more productive. So, I'm a really big fan of bullet journaling, and so I'm going to preface that by saying. I can't draw. So my, you're not going to like, I don't have, uh, I have this uh, girl who used to um, babysit for us and she's got her Instagram. It's so beautiful. What she does with bullet journaling. It's oh. unreal. Like with the pens and the pictures Yay. and the everything, her calendars are always like, she's like this month it's Gothic cathedrals. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and it's like amazing. Um, 
And so that's not how I do things. My handwriting is terrible. I can't draw. That's fine. So what bullet journaling is though, is it is where you're, you're not using any kind of pre-packaged planner. You're not taking anyone else's framework. You're creating your own free form way of keeping track of tasks and reminders and things you want to do. So I sort of, when I back when I was like, I guess like, I don't know, it was a long time ago, um, was working for a film producer. And basically his whole thing was he would come into the office in the morning and then just start telling me things. And I, this was before we did not, this was in, I'm going to tell you what year it was, 1997. We did not, I didn't have a computer or I did have a computer, but it was like, I turned it on later in the day. Right. We did not have internet. Um, so I had an, I had my spiral notebook. And so everything he would tell me that he needed me to do, I would write it down and I would put a little dot next to it and then I'll leave a little space and then write the next one down and write the next one down. So then I would have everything he wanted me to do. Then I could look at them and say, okay, I would start to prioritize All right, what's important, what's less important. You know, what are the things that are clearly time sensitive where he was like at 12 o'clock, we are calling this person. And then like less time sensitive would be like, I want you to read this script and tell me what you think. And so then I would kind of know like what had to be done. And so every day before he would show up, I would review anything that I did got checked off. Anything that I hadn't done yet got checked off and then rewritten. So like if I hadn't read that script yet, I would check off where I wrote it the first time and then I would write it again as a brand new entry. And like with bullet journaling, they'll use like symbols, like you'll yeah, do like, like an arrow. arrow. Yeah. But for me, like in a spiral notebook, it was just like, and if I wrote, rewrote it again, then it felt like, oh, right. Don't forget to do this. Right. And, like and then I could go again. back and see like what I missed. Um, so I still have continued that. And so with bullet journaling, I'll do kind of a, I like to do like a monthly overview. What do I want to accomplish this month? What do I want to accomplish? What needs to happen this week? And those are for things that are not time sensitive, like for project stuff. And then like, what needs to happen today? And so that will be, and that's a mix of things that are like personal, like call the, you know, call my kid's pediatrician and schedule their, their visit, you know, appointment or, um, things like pay estimated taxes, You know, so like those kind of (laughs) things go in there. And for me, I, you know, everybody knows me as the paperless person and I do love my paperless, but I use pen and paper. Paper. I am a pen and paper girl too. Oh my goodness. So I have like a, maybe a modified bullet journal. Um, I carry, I literally carry this notebook with me everywhere. And if I have a thought or something, I, I just do so much better writing it. People, I know so many people that use their phones and their like the notepad on their phones, and I've tried so hard because I'm like that would be so much easier than mm-hmm. lugging this notebook around with me. There really is something to just the act of writing and how it solidifies in my mind. Like I almost can like photographic memory my to do list when I write it, but I cannot do that when I type it on my notes section, which is so interesting on how our brain works when we tie in the two sides of our brains, you know? Um, so I, I definitely think this is such a helpful technique and I do use the little arrow thing where I like arrow over to the next day. My question for you is, since you've been using this longer, do you put your, um, business stuff and your personal stuff together or do you separate it? Like if you have today, I want to accomplish you know, five personal tasks and three business tasks. Is that all on the same page or do you like block it off separately? How do you do that? Everything is mixed. Yeah. So, because I, I don't need to, I don't want to look at two different places. Yeah. I have been experimenting. So what I, what I've been doing for a really long time is just using the, um, the notebooks, the, um, like term, those are like the bullet journal notebooks that everybody loves yeah. and like yeah. the paper is so creamy and beautiful, but I, I do like to use like colored pens. Yeah. Uh, my favorite, like, and I, and I get, I switch back and forth between which pen is what color is my current favorite color that I want to write with. And oh, I cool. like getting like the lemon yellow notebook and carrying it around. So I do have that, but then I was experimenting with, um, Michael Hyatt, who's like a productivity guy. And I, I don't know, I have feelings about his, his book, 
that aren't like his book called Free to Focus. Yes. He has some good tips in it. And he, he is big on time blocking, but he's big on time blocking in like, and when you come home from the office, that is your leisure time, which like I'm telling you, any like working parent knows or <laughs> any working person who has like responsibilities, yeah. um, care, any kind of caregiving responsibilities, which is, you know, a lot of us in these helping professions where we also have kids or we have aging parents or we're involved in our communities. Like we know that that idea of like, block off time for leisure is kind of like a joke, but right. at, so there was a little bit of like, I'm going to like white male privilege in <laughs> wrote that book. However, there's good tips in there. And then he puts out, he has a planner called the, the full focus planner. And I've been using that for a couple of months and it's, it's a bullet journal format. It is pretty free form, but it has the structure is like you set your big three for the week. So here are the big three things I want to accomplish. So like for this week, my big three were podcasting with you, uh, getting my kids transitioned to school. And then um, the third was I have some one-to-one clients that I'm building websites for and doing customizations for that I wanted to focus on. So those are my big three. And then there's a list. This is how I'm using it. It where I just kind of brain dump everything that I need to get done this week, like everything. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, and it's personal, it's business, it's for my private practice, it's for um, my coaching business that I have, it's for the podcast, it's for the stuff you and I are doing to get like everything, Mm. even like get movie tickets, (laughs) yeah, see a movie, it all goes in there. And then, and then I look at each day, he has a page it has a page for two page spread for each day. And then I take those tasks and I copy them into the day where I think I'm going to do them. And then I can also write down, I have a consult at this time. I have to pick up my kids at this time, like all of those little things. And then you do a big three for the day. Like what are the three things that I want to make sure I get done today? And those are also a mix for me of personal and business. So, you know, it's like first day of school, for my daughter, older daughter, first day of school for my younger daughter, those are priorities. And that's really actually helped me like back to the whole like time blocking work-life balance thing that I really struggle with. Um, Just physically writing down that spending time with my kids is a priority or like even over the summer, I had a lot of days where all three of my daily priorities were beach because we were going to the beach. I'm like, (laughs) that is my priority. And that really, it just, it really helps me curb. I I mean, I, I really, cause I do really struggle with wanting to just work all the time. I I really struggle with turning that off. And I I do feel like thinking about it, keeping everything mixed together has helped me with that. I don't know if I'm going to keep up my subscription to this thing because I am not, I'm not filling every page. I'm not using everything and it's kind of expensive. But yeah. I do like that. It sounds model. like you could then like just transfer those kind of the things that you're using the most into your burn, bullet journal that you already have, you know, yeah. like I can go back. Over. I want to try a green journal next time. I can go yeah. back to my pretty colored journals <laughs> that don't have like his, like these ones, they're like black and they're not like, just like, executive looking. And yeah. I, I think of myself that way. I'm a, I'm a lactation consultant. I'm like, yeah, you know, drive it's nice to have Birkenstocks. <laughs> it's nice to have the creative flair. Like that's one thing I have also liked about my semi bullet journaling is like just the occasional creative flair, like just using fun pens and, um, just, you know, making the process of trying to be more productive, trying to make to-do lists, like not so, just tedious and it's just like more work to be done in this ugly black pin and you know Mm -hmm. it's just like oh look it's like so pretty and look I wonder if I can draw a flower look how cute that is you know (laughs) I can't draw either (laughs) but I have found that to be and yeah I I read the Michael Hyatt book too and 
And again, I like some of it I thought was really helpful and some of it I was like, okay, whatever. But, um, but I do think it's important for us to think about like the things that we do want to have balance in, in our lives and not forget to put that into our productivity too. Like we also need to be productive with connecting with the people we care about and be productive with our self care. Like, um, that's a lesson I'm learning big time right now. Like I'm really, really reminding myself all the time, like, like you have to time block even your self care. Like today on my top three is also going to be, I really want to be able to sit in a bath for, you know, 15 minutes, or I want to be able to go take a walk with one of my kiddos, you know, things like that. Like time blocking, even that again, this all, for all the same reasons we could be productive in our business you know, assuring ourselves that these tasks will get done. If you time block your connection with the people you love and your self care, you can also be reassured that those tasks will get done because those are so important for the, you know, just the joy and the happiness that we also have in our lives and that balance feel. And we talked about that in a previous episode in our compassion fatigue episode, where you and I talked about how like overwhelming this work is that we do. And, and I would say that's probably the number one reason to get serious about productivity. It's not, so it's not because we're these like, you know, startup founders trying to do like conquer the world. I mean, whatever, yeah, it's not like Maybe hustle that's who all you the are. time, <laughs> you know, some, like some of you out there are doing really innovative, yeah. like tech forward stuff. That's cool. Um, but like a lot of the productivity stuff is kind of for a different kind of person than a lactation consultant. And our goals are, we really want to have the space and the energy and the attention and the compassion for our clients. And when our brains are clogged up with all kinds of tasks and worries, and we're not organized with our time, that eats into our ability to give to our clients what we want to give to them. And so it's not about like, I'm going to time block or Pomodoro or bullet journal, because I'm a, you know, crazy entrepreneur who has a gazillion bazillion ideas and I've got to make them all done. And I'm going to scale my company to 50 people or whatever it is like on, I'm going to go on shark tank and um, (laughs) like advertise a baby product that actually is helpful for babies and not like totally yeah. damaging to their <laughs> development and psyches, but that's a whole nother story. A but nother. really it's like, <laughs> we want to be organized so that we can give to our clients and, and so that we're getting, having that work-life balance to avoid compassion fatigue and avoid burnout. And definitely recommend checking out that episode on compassion fatigue if you haven't listened to it yet, because we have gotten a lot of great feedback since then that this is something that we're all struggling with. And this is big. And I think it's just such another layer because we, we, we all wear so many hats, you know, we're not just, most of us aren't just getting to go see moms and be done with it. You know, most of us are also having to manage running a business and, um, or at least being part of running a business. And, and that just adds another layer. But I think the thing, the thing that the productivity techniques give me the most is just presence. Like when I, if I, if my brain is quiet because I know tasks are going to get done and are getting done and I can kind of trust myself to just stay in this present moment that I don't have to keep this swirl in my head to make sure I get it all done. That like when I'm in the family's home, I'm there and I'm not thinking, Oh, I got to make sure I write down da, 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 da. And Oh, did I call the pediatrician for my kids? Well, check, you know, like I'm not having to think those thoughts when I'm present with the family. And then when I'm present with my family, the people I care about, I can also just be there, you know, cause I have the set time to do the other things. So I think this is a gift you can give yourself. I really encourage all of us to be continuing this conversation. Cause I think it's so, so helpful, um, as we are continuing to grow as lactation consultants running these businesses. But as we do that, Annie, I know you have a productivity hack for our tech tip today. I do. And this is taking advantage of the ability to schedule your posts on social media. So those of you who are running Instagram accounts or Facebook pages for your private practices, you can schedule those posts. So on 
on Facebook, it's really easy on a page. You can just schedule it. And so when you are a great time block to do is to say, I'm going to write, you know, could be four social media posts for my Facebook page and you're going to write them and you're going to schedule them. And now boom, you have a month of content once a week content, which is more than amazing. And that could take you like 15, 20 minutes, bam, bam, bam. And you're you're done. done. And And and, it's just happening. So it's so awesome. It's so awesome. And if you set that time aside, you can like be assured that it's going to happen, you know? And for Instagram, um, I use a a service called Tailwind. You do have to pay for it. Um, I, I investigated others and this one I've liked the best. And that lets me um, upload photos and write captions and even add hashtags and tag people and then schedule them to be distributed throughout the month. So, um, so I can do all of that. And that is a way that I use a time block is that at the beginning of every month, I block out a, a set period of time where I'm going to just seed my month with some Instagram posts. And I don't make them all, um, like I don't post, like have it set to post every day. I'll do like twice a week. So then that way I'm also have room in there for spontaneous posting, um, or reposting other great things that people are sharing. So, um, so, but that way, at least I know that I'm not going to be social media dark for a month. Right. And then that, and cause that way I don't, and they don't feel the urgency that I have to come up with something. Right. Absolutely. That's a great tip. I love it. I love it. Well, it has been so fun to be back together again. And I'm so excited for this, um, you know, this journey back to podcasting now that we've had a little break. I'm I'm really excited for all that we have coming up. And speaking of things we have coming up, um, you're going to want to be watching our website, lactationbusinesscoaching.com and also our Facebook page, because we are going to be announcing a little new offering. Um, And we're not going to say too much about it right now, but it's going to involve us talking to you, you talking to us, getting your questions answered, and we're going to keep it really low cost so that it's not going to kill you to get the help that you want with your business. Cause we're all about, um, helping people be their best lactation consultant. They can be. Yes. I'm excited about that too. So stay tuned for more information. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's been great talking to you today, Annie, and I look forward to our next time together. You too. Bye Leah. Bye. Thanks for listening to lactation business coaching with Annie and Leah. If you like this podcast, please leave us a rating or review on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you're listening right now. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode.